Hey everyone, so this is a collaboration video I'm doing with another YouTube user named Sick Diecast. Link to his channel below. I'd contacted him to do this collaboration as he is the master of doing truck lifts and I wanted to have a go at the Munster truck in Fury Road. If you're into lifting trucks of the 164 scale variety, you need to subscribe to him for the how-to videos on that particular subject. If you wish to see how he built this truck up to this point, I'll provide a link for you to check out before watching this video. This is the tune version of a 41 F100 that he's placed on top of a vintage 80s Matchbox Monster Truck base. He's put in quite a few hours of work to marry these two parts and to get the Ford body to look like a Dodge body, which is what they use in the movie. My job in this collaboration video is to take it from this point to the final Mad Max vehicle. I'm using the truck in the movie as a guide, however I will take some creative license here and there. So let's get started. So the truck is made up of three parts, the matchbox base, an interior plastic part that makes up the cab and the floor of the bed of the truck, and of course the metal body which is what I'll start with. While there are not a lot of panel lines on this truck, the ones it does have are pretty shallow. Given all I plan to do, I think it would be a good idea to deepen the panel lines. To do this, I use a dental pick to remove small amounts of metal in the lines and thus deepen them. Given enough time, you could actually cut parts like doors out using this method. It takes a lot of patience though, so keep that in mind. The truck used to have a hole in the hood that sick die cast filled in with JB Weld. I'm going to use the dental pick to scribe a new panel line across the JB Weld for the hood panel line. Over the front two fenders are two mold lines that come from manufacturing the car. I'll use some sandpaper to remove these lines. Here's what it looks like after the lines have been taken out. I've also done a little sanding and work on the hood, just to smooth everything out. At this point, I'm going to spray primer over the areas I've been working on in the front. This is only so I can see the surface issues that I need to work on. Once I spray on this gray primer, any pits, scratches, or misshaped areas will stand out, allowing me to see them more clearly. Here you can see the primer revealed some pits and lines that need to be filled in. To remove these blemishes, I'll use some Tamiya putty. This is great stuff. It dries in about 30 minutes on a warm day and is easy to sand. I usually apply it with a popsicle stick, but this time I just use a finger. Once it's dry, I can sand it down. Here's what it looks like after sanding. You can see that the pits appear to be filled in. So now I can respay the body with primer and check my work again. The hood looks correct, so now I'm going to start working on the grill. This area was hand sculpted out of Tamiya putty. I'm going to use a small sanding stick to start cleaning things up. I like what Sick Diecast did here with the grill, but after much contemplation, I decided to remove some of it and take a different approach. From looking at pictures, it appears that the openings in the front are cut out of the body and sit behind the cross. To generate this look, I'm going to use a Dremel and a cutoff wheel to cut in the front vents. The front of the truck is pretty flat, so I'm hoping to create a bit of an illusion of depth by cutting the vents and then fixing the cross with putty. My hope is to see through the vents behind the cross and give the impression that the front is more pointed than it really is. To fix the cross, I just use a Tamiya putty as I did earlier. While that is drying, I'm going to go ahead and make some more cuts to the hood. The original truck had openings on both sides, and I want to reproduce those openings with my Dremel and a small cutting wheel. These holes will allow people to see into the engine and will give the truck further layers of depth. You do need to be careful if you use this particular tool on your Dremel as this one tends to run away. Once the holes are in, I'll use a small file to clean up the die cast metal and remove any burrs and sharp edges. Since I have this tool in my Dremel, I'm going to go ahead and cut in a rear window, just like the original truck has. Once the hole is cut, I'll use a file and some sandpaper to clean it up and do any final shaping. 
So here's the front of the car after I sanded down the putty. If I did it right, it should give the illusion that the front sticks out even though it's mostly flat. So now that I have everything where I want it as far as the body is concerned, I will go ahead and spray on another coat of primer. While that dries, I can switch over and work on the base. The truck will need an engine, and a rather large one at that. I'll be using this plastic engine I got from a Pinewood Derby car set. The engine has a large intake on top that I'll need to remove. Once again, I use a Dremel to cut this off. After cutting down the engine, all that is left is to glue it onto the base with superglue. I need some exhaust pipes for the engine, and after searching, I found that the pipes on this rigor mortar will work just fine. However, I will need to remove one pipe from each side to get them to fit. It takes some shaping and adjusting, but eventually I was able to get both sets of exhaust pipes to fit, and then glued them onto the engine. So here's how the truck's looking thus far. I know the original truck didn't have any exhaust coming out of the front fenders. I chose to go this way because I had an unwanted gap between the engine and the base. Putting the exhaust here filled that gap and also gave the truck a more menacing look in my opinion. Now let's take a look at some headlights. For the headlights I'm going to use these I found on this old die cast truck. While they're attached I'll use my Dremel and a sphere cutter to haul them out like the headlights on the original truck. Once they're hollowed out, I'll cut them off and then glue them to the front of the monster truck. While I made that sound simple, it really was a pain as the headlights were small and light, making them difficult to align. But in the end, I think I was able to pull it off. After the glue sets up, I'll prime the headlights and also prime the floor and cab of the truck. Okay, so back to the base. This front panel under the engine needs to go. I noticed that all the die-cast monster trucks today seem to have this, and it always takes away from the illusion of realism. I will use a small wheel cutter to chop it out, and also make some cuts on the panel behind the front panel. I would go to a lot more trouble to skeletonize this base if the wheels were removable, however they're not, so I'm limited as to the angles I can use the Dremel. Since I'm cutting things off this base, I'll go ahead and remove this box part in the back. Like the panel in the front, it also looks out of place. So here's how the front turned out after I was done. With all the cutting and shaping done, I can now look at painting. For the body, I'm going to give it a metallic undercoat. This is done by decanting some metallic paint and then using an airbrush to apply it on the truck body. I like using this Valspar paint you see towards the left. It sprays through the airbrush with ease and is just as shiny as spraying it from the can. Do be sure that you use proper ventilation if you decide to try this. If you do it indoors, be aware your house will smell of paint for a bit. While I'm waiting for the paint to dry, I'll move back to the base and work on the exhaust. I want to add some realism to the pipes by drilling them out with a pin vise and a small drill bit. I start with a very small drill bit and then move up to a size almost the diameter of the pipe. After the holes are drilled, I'll go ahead and mask everything off and then paint the exhaust pipes. So it's been a couple days now and the paint is fully cured, so I can now begin weathering effects on the body. To do this, I'll be using weathering powders from Tamiya. I've used these in the past for detailed effects. They're powders that have a small amount of oil in them. This allows them to be applied to surfaces with ease, or at least a lot easier than dry powders. How much rust you apply is a personal preference. I happen to like my Mad Max vehicles pretty rusted out. So here's what mine looked like after I was finished. As you can see, I really like rust. Since the powders are just sitting on the surface, I need to clear coat over them to lock them in place. 
Since I'm going to be using some wash later, I'll clear coat with gloss since this will help with the wash. Once the clear coat is dried, I can apply the wash with the brush. Here I'm using Null Oil by Citadel. This is by far one of my favorite washes to use. It really does give a good grimy look to whatever it's applied to. Okay, so all the wash is dried and I've now clear coated with a matte clear coat to lock the wash in. I put the truck back together so you can see where I am and how things are going together so far. So the original truck had a roll bar. I want to try and reproduce this for my model. To do this, I'll use some aluminum tubing bent into shape. The actual truck had dual tubes, which I will also copy. Bending the tubing is simple. I'll use a pair of these plastic pliers to keep from scratching the surface. Large tubing must be filled with sand or it will collapse on itself when bent. However, tubing this small doesn't suffer from this and can be bent as if it was a solid rod. After the parts are bent, I will glue them in. So you may have noticed the post that was also glued into the bed of the truck. This is to accept the harpoon I made. The real truck I believe had two harpoons, or maybe a harpoon and a gun, I'm not sure, but mine will just have one. This was very simple to make, essentially it's just tubing, wire, and styrene glued together. I bent the tubing and flattened the end to make it look like the stock of a gun. The biggest pain was to get the scale correct, or at least in the ballpark. This surfer dude is supposed to be in 164 scale and came with a jeep and a boat several years back. I've been using him to try to get the scale correct. The gun is inserted into the post in the truck, and since it's a pressure fit, it can be moved up and down and rotated 360 degrees. I want to go ahead and weather the bars. To do this, I'll mask them off and then paint them silver. While the paint is still tacky, I will apply the weathering powder of my choice, in this case a fresh looking rust. The tackiness of the paint makes applying this powder very easy. Now I'm going to go ahead and paint the harpoon. I'll paint it with Vallejo acrylic metal color. I just picked up a large selection of these metal colors, so you'll be seeing them in future videos. They come thin for airbrush and are simple to apply, and since they are acrylic, there's a lot of cool tricks that we can use them for. However, in this video, we'll use them as intended. After I paint the harpoon, and while it's still wet, I'll apply some of the rust powder to the armor plate and a little to the gun. Once I have the weathering done on the gun, I'll seal it with matte clear coat. After that dries, I can go about threading the harpoon. I'll be using kite string as the rope for the harpoon. I used a small amount of super glue to hold the knot and then started threading in a figure eight. I used some more super glue to keep everything in place. For the part that connects to the harpoon, I dabbed a small amount of super glue on the end and then held it to the wire until it was set. So here's how the harpoon turned out. I forgot to mention before, to make the spear, I flattened the wire with a hammer and then sanded the end in the shape of a spear. And yes, I have stabbed myself with this sharp wire when going to pick up the truck. Now that the gun and bars are done, I can work on the bed of the truck. Here I'm going to use a concoction I made myself. This is water-soluble clay suspended in water. You can make this by placing some clay in a blender with some water. Blend it for a few minutes and then let it set for a few days. The mix will separate into three layers, a water layer, a suspended clay layer, and a layer of larger particles on the bottom. I simply poured off or decanted the water layer into the sink and then saved the suspended clay layer into this container. To use it, you shake well and apply with a brush. Allow it to dry and then clear coat over it. The effect it gives is of a muddy surface. Once everything is dry, I'll once again clear coat the entire body with matte clear coat. While that is still wet, I'll add some weathering powder to the back of the headlight, and this should finish up the body of the truck. With the body pretty much done, I'll move over to the base once again. 
Here I'm using some Chester's red paint to paint the bottom of the engine. This is a very minor effect, but it gives the eye something to look at if you look under the front fenders. I need to get rid of the chrome on the base. To do this I'll use an airbrush and some black primer to cover it up. For the wheels I'll use a sand color paint to give them a dusty look. I find that spinning the wheels while painting them gives the best results. While I have this color in my brush, I'll apply some to the fenders and the back to give the truck that dusty look it would have from driving around an apocalyptic wasteland. The next thing I need to do for the wheels is to remove the paint from the treads. This will give them a more realistic look. You can roll the truck like I am here on sandpaper, or just use the sandpaper normally. So I put the truck back together and felt that the sand color paint on the wheels was a little too much and a little too uniform. To break it up and make it look more dirty, I'll use my black wash to go over the tires. Once that is dry, the truck is done. I want to thank Sick Diecast for all the work he put into this project. If you haven't done so already, consider subscribing to his channel. And of course, if you wish to see more projects like this, consider subscribing to my channel. As usual, I would like to hear from you and your thoughts about this particular model, what you like, what you didn't like, and what you might change. I learn a lot from you guys and how to further improve. I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, thanks for watching.